everyone, Shelby Thomas with you today to help celebrate Simple Pleasures 21st, can you believe it, anniversary and a big congratulations to Kathy. And what I'm showing off today is the new exclusive stamp and sentiment made exclusively for Simple Pleasures by Memory Box. And we're going to use some color bursts today too. I'm using my favorite, favorite stamping ink, which is VersaFine, because I'm going to be using water-based instead of alcohol-based products, and it's perfect for that. The other thing I'm going to show you is my favorite masking material, which is Frisket. It's made by Grumbacher, is my favorite. On the bottom is orange, has nothing to do with the functioning of the product, but rather coloring. So think of it as food coloring for um, the frisket. What I just showed you right there is some of the accumulation that can occur on the lid. Frisket is basically a liquid latex, and when it dries, it forms a latex barrier over wherever you've placed this frisket on your work. And what I'm going to do is mask the, the poppy, and I've sped the tape up here so that you don't get too bored. And I've used just a basic um, cheapo, cheapo paintbrush from Michaels in the kids section. Do not use a good brush for this. It'll never function the same. I can probably get three or four uses out of these cheap paint brushes before I have to throw them away because it becomes so loaded down with the dried frisket. So, as you can see what I'm doing is I'm just coloring in and you can see where the orange is letting me know this is where I've laid down this liquid mask. It takes about, depending on the thickness of the frisket that you've laid down, anywhere from 30 to an hour and a half to completely dry. So the thinner the layer, the shorter the dry time, the thicker the layer, the longer the dry time. On the right side is what it looks like when it's dried. You can see it's a little more orangey and on the left is the one that I just did. So in I'm coming with my color burst and I'm going to use yellow and red and together they'll make orange. So you're going to have three different colors going on here. And I wet the paper first so I can do more of the wet to wet technique. I went in first with the yellow then I'm going to dab in between squirting and tapping the color burst onto the paper. I don't always like to squeeze it because sometimes you can get a big old blob of um, the color burst on if you squeeze it. So I do like to tap a little bit more than I like to squeeze. So coming back in with lots more water. I want this to be more of a watercolory look where all the crystals are dissolved and it looks more like I've watercolored it versus the bursting where you have the, the separation of the crystals just stuck in place on the paper. And if I was thinking ahead, I would have taped it down to my board, but I did not think of that, so that's the option. Because anytime that water comes into contact with paper, it's going to warp and the sides are going to try to curl under, which means all your ink and your paint is going to run off to the side. So that's why I'm sticking my finger in the middle so that not all the color is running to the side. And I'm going to create, another thing you can do with color bursts is to create um, watercolor right there on your craft mat. I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit and then I'm going to come in and just mix up this yellow down here that I put on the right hand side to make a yellow watercolor. And I've loaded up my brush and I'm just going to lay some additional yellow into the work. I thought it was a little too orangey red and I wanted some more yellow to come in. So you can use your paint brush I'm using a six round here to spread the color, to move it, to shift it, to get it to a point where you may like it a little bit better. It was uh, needed even more yellow, so I added a little less water this time. And poking my finger down in the middle, very scientific way to do that, laying in more yellow. And this paper is actually quite large, it's six by four and a half, so I know I'm going to be cutting a lot of this down. And my favorite thing, I don't like pooling on my work. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I have a little obsessive thing about pooling on my work. So I like to come in with a paper towel and just soak up the extra. I'm not laying it in the work. I'm just letting the edge of the paper towel soak the extra ink and water up. And whenever it's wet, you can still shift and move with your paintbrush to get the ink to move or the paint to move where you'd like it to go and still obsessively soaking up some of the extra puddles. I think I have a problem. 
But anyways, um, it's all personal choice. If you like the, the, the looks that heavier inks give you, by all means, leave it there. I've now dried it with the heat gun, or you can set it aside to dry. What I'm going to show you is how easy it is to remove the latex, or what was once known as frisket. Just going to rub my finger. One of the key things to do is rub in towards it instead of out, because if there's not, if the medium's not completely dried on that rubber, and you take it off into your work, you could smear it. So I like to fold it and roll it in into itself so that it doesn't um, impact any other part of the work. So speedy 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 it's all taken off now so there you have a finished look of the frisket combined with the color burst I'm going to come in and stamp the sentiment and in about two seconds you're going to see my big old head so I apologize that my head got in the way I forgot that I was actually filming but I like to be as you can see right on top of my stamps when I stamp to make sure that it's even and the sentiment is where flowers bloom, so does hope. And the wonderful thing is that there is a poppy petal on the end of this stamp. I'm going to put one up in the right corner. And trying to balance it out, I'm going to put it down here in this left open space next to so. And there you have, before I'm going to cut it down. So I've cut down the paper to fit on the front of an A2 card. I'm going to pop it up with foam tape. Foam tape is a wonderful way to keep warped paper straight on a card. It's one of my preferred ways. My adhesive, some, some are strong enough to hold it down, but foam tape does the job wonderfully, so I never have to doubt whether it's going to stay down with foam tape. So I'm going to line it up, set it, and there we have it. The wonderful, beautiful new stamp set available only at Simple Pleasures, made by Memory Box in celebration of 21 years. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We'll see y'all soon. Thanks for stopping by.